God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Good morning. You are listening to the broadcast of First Amy Church here in Seattle, Washington, a place of possibilities. Make sure you are following us on all online platforms so you can get the latest fame news. Now it is time to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Come with me as we enter into our service. He has guided us. He has protected us. And this morning, he deserves all the glory, all the honor. It's such a blessing to be alive today. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So many did not live to see today, but God has kept us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Go on and help us worship this morning. Bless the Lord.
morning again. I'm sorry. I want to take a moment to extend a very warm welcome to everyone who's watching or being here this morning. Whether you're just having a look up, searching for a place to worship or a member, we're delighted to have you here. So we want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the fifth Sunday of the Mary F. Handy Women's Missionary Society. You are in for a blessing. Thank you, and please enjoy yourself. We will now have our prayer by Ms. Charlotte Brady. Amen. I just want you all to know that I am on full this morning after a blessed time at Fame South with Sister Dallas Richardson. She gave an excellent word. Excellent word. Even though we have a shortage. Just know that God, there's no shortage in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So as we humble our minds and our bodies and our souls and our spirit, we just ask the Lord to come into this place right now. Lord, we want to thank you right now. For you are an awesome God. Your grace and your mercy is sufficient enough. Lord, if it wasn't for your love, where would we be? Even though, Lord, we are going through a shortage right now, a pandemic, our ecosystem is all out of whack. Our children, Lord, they're suffering. Spiritually, mentally, physically. Lord, but I know, I know a God that will supply all of our needs, Lord, according to his riches. Lord, I remember when I was going through, and I remember when I was sick. It's been 29 years since I've had cancer, and I'm still here to tell the story. So I know you are a healer. I remember when I was making $400 a month and I never missed a beat. Always had a roof over my head, food in my belly, a car to drive. My children were taken care of. My family was still intact. We still supported each other because I know you are a provider. Lord, for those that are going through it right now, all they need to do is call on the name of Jesus. If you just take a moment, if you're struggling right now, and just ask the Lord to enter your heart. If you just ask him, Lord, it is me, oh Lord, standing in the need. I want to refer to it as the big three. And I'm the fourth man. We're the fourth man. I know it might have started out with the Seahawks. But Lord, we want to thank you because the big three is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we are his children. We are the fourth. So anytime the Lord will send a message through Jesus Christ, and then what Jesus did was Jesus came down. And he came down in the form of a man. And Lord, we thank you. Because he was able to feed those, those 5,000 men, as you said, Dallas, this morning. Because I was listening. With five loaves of bread and two fish. And so don't worry about our shortage here on earth. Missionaries, we are... We are the providers along with Jesus. He, we, 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 we go out and, and, we, and we work and we minister and we provide resources for, for, for people that are in need. And so, Lord, we thank you to be able to do that, to be able to, to wake up in the morning and know that you have 
someone to talk to. If you can't talk to nobody else, you can talk to Jesus. Just call on his name. He's an on-time God. He'll come when you, when you don't even expect it. For those of you that are struggling with knowing how to pray, just go to Matthew 6. If you are struggling with, 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 your, with your children, Lord, if we're struggling, just, just go to Jesus. Just call on his name. It's the sweetest name you'll ever know. And Lord, we thank you right now. We know that, that the world, there's so much turmoil going on in the world. We know that the, the enemy is out to attack our minds, our bodies, our souls, our spirits. But Lord, we are not going to give him the victory. We are going to stand and we're going to fight. We're going to put on the full armor of God. And we're going to step out on faith because that's all we have. We have our faith, church. We have our faith the people that are listening to this broadcast. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is what's going to get you through. Love is what's going to get you through. Love does not envy. Love is not boastful. Love is not a criminal act. Love is peace. There's joy with love. There's hope with love. If you ever need anything, just tap into your love. Sometimes we don't get it from our family members, but we can get it from Jesus. Just shout out his name for me one more time. Jesus. Jesus is the sweetest name we know. Jesus is our light in darkness. When we're feeling it, when we're in darkness right now, it's Jesus. And so I'm asking you, Lord. To send down your anointing, your blessing. Cover this church family. Cover the world. Cover our community. Cover our pastor. Cover our families. Cover our children. Cover our schools. Cover our homes. Cover our minds, Lord. Because when the praises go up, I don't know about you, but when the praises go up, when the praises go up, when the hallelujahs go up, when the hallelujahs go up, Lord, the blessings will come down. And so I'm going to claim it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to claim your name right now, Lord. I'm going to claim it. This I ask in your son Jesus' name. In your son Jesus' name. In your son Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
Let's thank our praise team one more time. He is wonderful. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Can somebody shout praise the Lord? This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. Are you glad to be in the house one more time? To our online viewers and worshipers with us, welcome to First Emmy Church here in Seattle. And again, we just want to give a big shout out. Dallas Richardson preached this morning at our 9 o'clock service in Auburn. Praise be to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, daughter. Today is our Women's Missionary Sunday, and we praise God for the work of our Mary F. Handy Missionary Society. They are doing a Herculean job, and we praise God. Can we just give God a hand clap of praise for them? I said, give them a hand clap of praise for the work that they do under the leadership of President, Madam President Stephanie Sellers. Today is the anniversary, the 58th anniversary of the March on Washington, August the 28th, 1963. And do you know, after 58 years, we still need to march. We still need to speak up. We still need to stand up. And we still need to promote equity and social justice for all. Also, we're praying for those in the New Orleans, Louisiana area and those various states in the Gulf who are hit, being hit right now with a Category 4 storm. And those of you that have family and friends and neighbors there, I want you to know we're praying for you. We're praying for you. Somebody say, we're praying for you. And let us not forget, lest we forget, the earthquake that happened in Haiti. And so on next Sunday, First AME Church is going to be joining with the Connectional AME Church in receiving a special offering. We're sending it to our district so that we can send from the 5th Episcopal District relief for those members who are suffering in Haiti. And I would add and venture to say for those that are suffering in Ida, you know, we don't want another Hurricane Katrina. We are on the anniversary, the brink of the anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. But we know that with God and with prayer, change can happen. Somebody from, from this sanctuary say, praise the Lord. And so we thank you for your gifts. We thank you for all that you do. And we're going to see right now a video are we prepared now to show the the work of the women's missionary society 
And this is your church. This is your missionary society. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Missionary Society. Thank you, Madam President. Come on, we can do better than that in this worship experience today. On the screen, you'll be able to see how you can share your gifts. We thank you for your just generosity and your gifts that you give and share. That's what makes the church able to operate, able to function, able to do ministry through your gifts you can give by way of your cell phone. Those of you watching online, you can give through our uh, website. And you can also uh, send your, your gift in by way of the U.S. mail. Let us remember the Missionary Society and tuck in a special gift so that they can continue to do the work. Amen? Amen. A gift of 5 $10 or whatever the Lord lays on your heart that's over and above your tithe will certainly helped us in a mighty, mighty way to do 
uh, the work of missions. Praise God. You know, God said he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us. Look at your neighbor. I know you can't touch him, but just look at him. Say, God will never leave us. No, he won't leave us. He said he'll always be there with us. He will always be there come with on, us. Come on, come on, come on. Put your hands together if you believe that. Not only will he never leave us, but he'll always be there with us. He'll be with us through the storm and through the rain. Listen to this. Come on, you can put your hands together. Hey, God said he would. God said he would be with me. God will be with me. God said he would be with me. God said. God said he would be with me. Said he would be with me. God said Come on, let's repeat that. He said he'd be with me. God said Through the ups and downs. Said he'd be with me. God said he would be with me. God said he'd be with me. God said he would be with me. He'll be with me. God said he would be with me. Through the storm. Through the rain. Through sickness and pain. Even though God said he'll be with you. God said he would be with me. Said he'd be with me. God said he would be with me. Through the ups and through the downs. God said he would be with me. Through the storm. Through the rain. Through the rain. Through sickness. Be with me. Be with me. He'll be with me. Be with 
How many of you know he'll be with you? Be with me. God say he'll be with me. You can call him in the midnight be hour. He'll be right there. Be with me. You can call him in the noonday. He'll God answer a prayer. You can go to be the water me. to pray. Be your soul me. will get happy be and you'll stay me. all God day. Dare you to step into me. the water. Be the water me. may be cold, be but not me. touch God your soul. Me. It me. is no secret what my me. God can do. Be what he's me. done for others, he'll be do the me. same God for you. you. Listen, God said it. 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 Said it be with me. Be with me. He'll be with me. Be with me. He'll be with me. Be with me. God said he'll be with me. Through the storm. Be with me. Through the rain. Be with me. He'll be with you. Be with me. Oh God yeah. He'll be with me. Through the storm. Through the storm. Through the rain. Through the rain. His sickness. Through sickness. And pain. my help coming on now. I know he'll be right there. I said I know he'll be right there. Anybody here got a testimony? He's been with you when you're sick and when you're ill and when you've been ill and under the weather God was right there. Just look at somebody and say he's been with me. No doubt in my mind he's been with me. Mano, do you know God's been with you? Ah, brother, okay. Do you know he's been with you? With me. Come on, let's have some church. You all got up early this morning. You might as well have some church today. You might as well come in to worship today. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't know about you, but I came to give him some praise. Oh, I came to give him some praise today. Let's thank our praise team, our musicians. Come on, let's thank them. What an honor it is to be in the house one more time. What an honor, what a joy, what a privilege it is to be in the house. One more time. You know somebody would like to be in your shoes right now? You didn't hear me. Let me talk to this side over here. You know somebody would love to be in your shoes right now. But there's a circumstance, there's a situation that they're going through. Maybe it's an illness, maybe it's a sickness, maybe they're in the hospital, maybe they're behind jail walls. But they say, oh, if I just had one opportunity to be in the house one more time. I would proclaim like David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. I want to thank Madam President and First Vice President of the Mary F. Handy WMS for inviting me to come today. Amen. I was prepared to be a worshiper under the uh, awesome preaching of the Reverend Dr. Kelly Brown, a dear friend of fame, a dear friend of ours, and a dear friend of your president, missionary president. But things uh, worked out a little different. And so as my wife and I were away out of town, I got the email, Pastor, we ain't got no preacher for Sunday. I said, well, we can't have a missionary Sunday without a 
missionary speaker. And so they said, well, you do it. And like a good boy scout, be prepared. And so thank you, Madam uh, President. We're so glad that Sierra got back. She's in, she was in New Orleans, and she made it out. Hallelujah. She made it out. She's here today with us. And when my wife and I had arrived back at the airport uh, late last night, there was a man just came up to me and started talking to me. We are on the bus going to the uh, baggage claim carousel, and he said, can you somebody help me out? And uh, he was looking right at me, so <laughs> I wanted to do the Christian thing and say, well, what can we do to help you out? He said, I just got off the plane from New Orleans. I just barely made it out, and I just don't know. I've never been to Seattle before. I don't know what to do. The bars are closed. The, say, the airport's about to close, and there's nowhere for me to go. And, and I said, brother, you better find your place right on the couch uh, there in the in the uh, lobby and wait for your next flight. Uh, I said, when's your next flight? He says, 12 hours from now. I said, I'll be praying for you. People were just excited and glad to be out. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been in it and it's, it's so sticky and it's, it's so uh, uh, overwhelming? You're just glad to get out. That was the countenance of this, this brother. And so when we think about missionaries, people are trying to get out of stuff. That's why we have a missionary society, because we're here, we're sent here to bring relief. We're sent here to provide an assisting hand. We're here because we want to change the fabric of someone's life. Their theme comes, the missionary theme comes from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20, 21. And it reads, now unto him. Let me change it. Now unto God, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto God be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Look at somebody and just, and just say this through your face mask at them. When you look at me, you are looking at what God can do. Come on, come on, look at him dead in the eye. Don't look at him to the point where you're going to kill him, but look at him dead in the eye and say, when you look at me, you are looking at what God can show up do. The Seattle Storm won the WNBA championship in October of 2020. Recently accepted this past week the invitation by our president to come to the White House. There hadn't been a championship team of any caliber or any athletic team to visit the White House since 2015. At the White House, President Biden applauded the Seattle storm and commended them for their work on the basketball field or basketball court, but as well commending them for their work off the basketball court, especially regarding their Force for Change initiative that was developed back in 2020. The Seattle Storm's Force for Change is a comprehensive social justice platform that will allow the storm to be a force to 
effect meaningful change in the city of Seattle and the Pacific Northwest. Bringing together players, the front office, ownership, as well as partners, Force for Change focuses on four key areas of impact. The areas of impact includes voting and education, which represents the BIPOC youth community, amplification of black women, amplification of LGBTQ leaders of color, and support BIPOC communities and small businesses here in this community. Making an impact is what we are designed to do. Those who serve in mission work, and all of us should be missionaries, whether we are a part of the organized WMS or not. As a member of the church, as a believer, you ought to see yourself as a missionary. I, I didn't get no amens there. God has made us, designed us, formed us, fashioned us to be his hand, to be the hand that helps people. How many of us realize today that you are God's greatest gift to humankind? Yeah, I'm talking to you. You should be applauding yourself. You and I, us, together, have been so wonderfully and creatively made that we were designed by God, God's self, to be the hand of our creator. We ought to realize that today we are the greatest gifts that God has created. Think about it. It took nine months for us to be born. Some came out a little early. Some came up a little late. Some had to be pulled or dragged out. But you're here. And all of us, whether we were nine months or eight months or came out a little later than nine months and some weeks, were formed into families, parents, people in our village that surrounded us, protected us, provided for us, sheltered us, built inside of us meaningful values, mores, and hopefully a strong sense of character. So when people look at you, they should be looking at what God has done through you. Let me say that again. When people look at you, saints, they should see what God has done through you. When you look in the mirror yourself, you ought to say, oh, God, you outdid yourself. God, how blessed you made me. God, how wonderfully and created I am. God, you took time fashioning me. And since God took time to fashion you and make you, mold you, and shape you, he made you for a purpose. He made you so that lives could be positively touched by you. He made you so that people who have uh, never been positively uh, changed can be positively changed because they came across your pathway. Communities you have been a part of and, and churches and groups that you call yourself a member of should be blessed and enhanced because you have made a profound difference. It's about building bridges, not walls. It's about building bridges and letting people know whatever river you may have to cross or hill you've got to climb. 
Uh, we're telling them because God wonderfully created me. God also wonderfully created you. And I'm going to walk with you as you climb your hill. I'm going to walk with you as you forge your valley. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to keep you in my thoughts. I'm going to keep you in my prayers. And together, we're going to see what the end is going to be. Everybody that sees a turtle sitting on the fence know they didn't get there by itself. Somebody helped it. And God has positioned us in one way or another to help somebody get up on the fence. We ought to be helping people get up on the fence, reach their full potential. By encouraging them, walking with them, speaking a word of life into their soul and keeping them in our thoughts and prayers. When people look at you, we should be looking at God's best and one of God's gifts. When we look at you, we should be looking at what God can do. Can I get a witness? When we look at you, we don't know your story, but everybody in here has a story. And it hasn't been all good. It hasn't been all glorious. But in spite of what you've been through, God brought you through. In spite of what you've been through, you should be able to testify, yes, I've been coming over hills and mountains. I've had some storms in my life. I've had some challenges that tried to take me out. But God still made a way. Is there anybody here God has made a way in your life? Is there anybody here that can testify if it had not been the Lord who was on your side? When family and friends forsook you, when friends could not be found, God still stepped in. Come on and give him some praise. God still held on. God still never let you go. And then you should have found out that through challenges and through trials and through tribulations, if it doesn't break you, it was built and designed to make you. If it did not break you, it was meant to make you. How many of y'all can testify. How many of you can testify? You've had a whole lot of stuff come your way, but it nearly broke you. But you're here to testify. It didn't break me, but it made me. How did it make me? I know that prayer works because I had to try it. I know that living right works because I've tried it. I know God's will will work because I've trusted in him. I know God makes a way out of no way because I had to depend on him. When you look at me, you are looking at what God can do. Look at your neighbor and say, when you're looking at me, you're looking at what God can do. You're looking at the handiwork of God. You're looking at what a blessing looks like. You're looking at someone that has made it through. Paul here in Ephesians, in those, in those chapters, those short chapters, Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus. Paul is in a Roman prison in in Rome, writing to a church in Ephesus. He is writing out of a particular, peculiar social historical context because around him and around the church, things are changing in the community. Paul is urging the church that you've got to change your way of thinking. Paul is urging the church that things are changing all around the neighborhood. Things are changing. You need to understand God did, just, did not just call Jews into this thing. God has called non-Jews, called Gentiles into this thing. Things are changing. God doesn't, doesn't want to build a, a heaven for black folk. God doesn't want to just build a heaven for white folk. God doesn't want... A, a, a heaven for rich folk, white folk, black folk, yellow folk, brown folk. God is building a heaven for all folk that believe in his name. He's changing the atmosphere. And he's urging the church, you got to change your way of thinking. 
You've got to open and extend your borders of theological understanding and religious space. God is building a multicultural church. God is building a church with Jews as well as Gentiles, as people from different walks of life. They are all welcome in God's place, in God's house, in God's sanctuary, in God's church. Uh-oh, did I say a wrong word? Did I say something wrong? Did I say something bad? Because some folk only want certain kinds of folk in their church. But you know, if we have that kind of idiocracy, God needs to remind you of where you came from. You see, sometimes we get so religious. Sometimes we get so saved. Sometimes we get so educated. We think that we're all of this and a bag of chips. And God has to play the rewind button in your life to remind you of what you used to do. Don't get quiet on me now. Nobody in here fell out of heaven. We were saved by the grace of God. The Bible says in Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and come short of his glory. And so since we've come short of his glory, that means God had to reach. He had to reach. He had to reach. And for some, he had to reach way down. Paul is trying to address the church. The church ain't just for Jews. The church ain't just for religious folk that think they are all of that. God is speaking to Gentiles and people from different walks of life. Just as God has blessed you, God is blessing them as well. And it's evident in relationships. He talks about relationships in Ephesians. He talks about children with their parents. He talks about husbands with their wives. He talks even about masters and their bond workers. And if we're going to have unity in the church, we cannot be tossed and driven by every wave of doctrine. We must have unity in the church. We must be open enough to extend our borders and allow those that are seeking God to come in and be able to hear what God can do in their life. So you got to think big. You got to ask big. You got to pray big. You got to dream big. You got to believe big. You got to watch and see how God is going to do even bigger things, even greater works, even more miracles, greater works. Greater works in the church, greater works in the missionary society, greater works in women's ministry, greater work in mission outreach, greater works in feeding the hungry, greater works in clothing the naked, greater works in assisting the elderly, greater works in supporting those with mental health issues, greater work in getting people COVID vaccinated, greater works in helping our millennials, greater work, greater works in hearing the voices of our Z generation and providing affordable housing for the poor, greater work. Oh, I wish I had a praying church. God didn't call us to sit here and look pretty, and the world around us is going to hell. God said, look, I brought you out so you can help bring others out. Somebody say praise the Lord. Listen, 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 this past March, talking about thinking big and dreaming big and asking big and praying big and believing big. This, this past March of this year in the city of Atlanta, the, the Women's National Basketball Association ownership of the Atlanta WNBA team shifted. Uh-huh. It shifted. Uh, you don't hear me. Somebody say shifted. <laughs> The owner was Kelly Loeffler. Y'all remember Kelly Loeffler? She was an appointed U.S. senator uh, uh, in the state of Georgia. And she owned a part of her Atlanta-based team. But... Uh, 
as she began to run her race to be elected for the first time, her team of consisting of black women, they were really shown sure enough proud of the Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock, the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. And she denounced her own team because they were supporting Reverend Warnock. She denounced her own team because they were embracing racial and social justice activism. She denounced her own team because they spoke out against the death of Breonna Taylor. She criticized her team. She criticized the people that she paid. And she criticized them to the point where the players took to the court publicly embracing the Senate campaign of her opponent, opponent Raphael Warnock, and wearing t-shirts and with a picture of Breonna Taylor on it. And it reached the league leadership. And they said, you caused too much havoc with the WNBA. You need to sell your portion. Uh, you need to sell your ownership because it's causing too much chaos. There was a woman on the team named Renee Montgomery who is an outspoken advocate for Breonna Taylor's death, an outspoken radical about racial, social injustice activism, was an activist in social justice politics. She wanted to meet with her owner and at least come to an understanding and sit at the table so they can come to a meeting of the mind. Leffler refused to meet with Renee Montgomery. So what did Renee Montgomery do? She took the next year off, didn't get paid. She took the next year off and she met with other people who might be interested in forming a group to purchase the team that Leffler was told to sell. Urged by LeBron James, urged by other professional athletes, she got enough people together and now she is the owner of the team of, y'all not feeling me, she is the owner of the Atlanta-based WNBA team. What is the name of the team? It is the Atlanta Dream. You got to dream big. You got to think big. You got to pray big. You got to be big and watch how God will do great things. I'm done. Stephanie told me I had 10 minutes and 15 seconds. I think I went over that, so I'm done. But I want to let you know, some of you are dreaming too small. Some of you, even in this room, you're dreaming too small. You need to enhance, increase your ability to dream. You don't know what God has in store. I heard this testimony from Sister Charlotte Grady, my daughter. And I love to hear, because I remember when she had both of her legs. I went to the hospital time in and time out as she was going through different procedures. And, and when they amputated her leg, she never lost her faith. I know it got hard. I know it got rough. I know it began to fester in her spirit, but she never lost sight of her faith. She kept worshiping. She kept singing. She kept witnessing. And in my office one day, I don't know if you remember, Charlotte, I told you, you've been called to preach. I don't know when it's going to happen, but you've been called to give your testimony. It's time for us to dream big. Time for us to think big. Time for us to act big. Time for us to think big. Time for us to be big. Do I have any witnesses? You're ready to dream big. Do I have any witnesses? You're ready to think big. Do I have any witnesses? Are you ready to act big? Are you ready to do some big things? Are you ready to go to the next level? Are you ready to break down some barriers? Are you ready to go the next mile of the way? Say yes. Come 
on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Don't let the devil take your dream. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil take your peace. God has something in store for every one of you. Every one of you. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. Things happen when you begin to dream. That's when things begin to happen. You got to be bold enough to dream. Every day you ought to dream it. Every day you need to visualize it. Every day you got to put it in perspective and watch and see how God is going to work in your life. Church, there's nothing stopping you but you. Ain't nobody holding you back but you. But I believe God is able to do it, exceeding and abundantly, far above measure, anything we put our mind to do. So for those of you that want me to pray with you right now, just stand on your feet. Wherever you are, wherever you are, just stand wherever you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, who we are right now, when people look at us, they should see God's greatest gift. Lord, let that gift come to fruition. Let that gift come into full form right now. We don't need everything we think we need. We don't need a whole lot. Just use what we have and let God give the increase. Apollos watered. Paul planted. Apollos watered. But God will always give the increase. Increase our intellect. Increase our love. Increase our joy for one another. Increase our understanding and knowledge of you. Increase our capacity to forgive. Increase our capacity to love. Increase the dissonance in our own families. Increase our ability to do your will. And Father, for everyone that's standing up right now, I pray for a double portion because they were bold enough to stand. Give them a double portion of everything they've asked for, everything they've been dreaming of, if it's within your will. For some, it might be a financial breakthrough. For others, it might be health. For others, it might be strength. For some, it might be alleviation of pain that they're seeing in their family. Whatever it might be, Give them a double portion of deliverance, even now. We're praying for those under the storm watch of this hurricane, Ida, Gulf of Mexico, New Orleans, Louisiana. Praying for those still yet unfound in Haiti. And we're praying for our nation as we're trying to grapple with the Afghanistan issue. Oh, God, we need you. We cannot make it without you. God, strengthen us. Embolden us. And we'll be careful to give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Come on and give somebody a bump and say, I see it coming. Come on, give somebody a bump. I see your victory coming. Come on, find somebody. Just give them a bump. I see your deliverance coming. I see your blessing on the way. I see God doing a new thing in your life. I see doors opening in your life. I don't see you being defeated and living as a victim any longer. I see depression being lifted. I see cancer being healed. I see COVID being decimated. I see it. Families restored. Healing happening in marriages. I see it, God. 
Now, God, bless us even again. For those of you watching online, we appreciate your presence today. And we want you to know that you are a part of our family. Write us at Fame at Fame Seattle. Let us know that you want to be a part of our family. Let us know you want to be a participant and e-partner with the ministry and the things that we do. It's a global outreach now. It's not just centralized in Seattle and Auburn and Federal Way and Kent. It's, it's a global ministry that we're engaged in. Extending our hand around the globe. That's what we do as AMEs. That's what we do as Christians. That's what we do as believers. Come on and join this family, even now. And we'll be careful to give you praise. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, how we thank you for what we've seen. We thank you for what you've heard, what we have heard. And we ask, God, your blessings upon your people until we meet again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and give God a blessing. A hand clap blessing. A hand clap of praise blessing. This concludes our services today. God bless you. We will see you first Sunday. We'll see you first Sunday. Remember, those exiting, please go out the doors in the back. And those that have mobility issues, you're free to come this way. We're trying to practice social distancing. Thank <laughs> you.